Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. Welcome to this week's tutorial where we talk about camera shake. All right, so before we jump into After Effects, I just want to let you know that I posted the Q&A, the first ever Q&A video for this channel yesterday. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. And if you want to ask some more questions for next week's Q&A, uh, go ahead and head over to my Facebook page and ask away into the Q&A post that I have on there. Anyways, let's jump into After Effects and let's get started. Camera shaking, place up. All right, so let's take a look at the footage that we'll need to pull this effect off. Now, in this scene, we have a lot of things that we can move and shake up just to add a little bit more interaction between the earthquake and the environment of your scene. So I'm gonna shake this shelf, then I'm gonna move over to this TV, shake that TV a little bit, and uh, then you know there's that nice little lamp that we can uh, have swing as the earthquake struck this apartment. And then I can just awkwardly leave. And then of course, the final piece of the puzzle is an Oscar-worthy performance to really sell this effect. And I'll thank the Academy right now. I can have my Oscar shipped to my address right away. All right, so all bad jokes aside, let's jump into After Effects and let's take a look at this first clip where I shake this lamp. So the first step that we wanna do is rotoscope my hand and myself out of the hallway since uh, you know we don't wanna show that I'm actually pushing the lamp and then set that mask to subtract. And then so this sort of tedious and boring step will be to animate this mask path and uh, move it as the lamp swings forward and backwards, a little bit of uh, keyframes. You know, if you just hit it, you probably have to animate it a few frames and you're done. But in my case, I uh, sort of had to follow my hand, pushing this lamp forward. Once you, your hand is out of the shot, you can just lower this mask and you have a uh, swinging lamp on its own. By the way, if you're interested in these type of ghostly effects where things move on their own, uh, I did a whole Halloween special tutorial and video about this, which you can check out in the info cards. So anyways, I created a second mask just to uh, cut out a larger section of the hallway out and also to have the option to feather that mask out a little bit more just to blend everything together. So now we have a lamp that's moving on its own and a hole in the hallway, which is great. So now let's add our second element that moves on its own, which is our shelf over on the left here. So I'm gonna drag that in and I'm gonna have to uh, position it in time where the earthquake happens. And just a quick little tip here, since it's always a pain to scrub through the timeline just to figure out where the earthquake is happening or any specific part of your visual effect occurs, then you can just sort of set a marker in the timeline so that every time that you drag in an element, you know exactly where it needs to go at that point in time. So once we do that, we can just uh, grab our pen tool and sort of just mask out just that section of the apartment where the shelf moves around a little bit. Then next up, we can add the TV shaking a little bit. So same exact thing. We're gonna drag that clip in, position it in time where we want it to be, and mask that section of the scene out. So there we go. Now we have a few things shaking up on their own. And then finally, you wanna add your reaction to, uh, to the earthquake. And you wanna position this in time so that the reaction of the guy in your scene matches with everything else shaking up. And then once you do that, you can actually move on to adding some extra elements yourself into After Effects, such as picture frames and other things like that. So I'm gonna add this picture of this very handsome dog. I mean, look at that, look at those eyes. Just, just captivating and just handsome. All right, so let's add this picture on the wall. We're gonna do a few things. We're gonna import this picture of a picture frame, and then we're gonna add a rectangular mask just to cut this white portion out. There's a nice little shadow there, so I'm gonna do something with it in just a second. So we're gonna set that mask to subtract, and uh, then of course we can reposition the picture of, a, of this very handsome dog uh, where we want it to be, and then do the same thing so that the picture fits within the frame. Now, going back to what I was saying, duplicate that picture frame layer, and we're gonna set that mask to add instead of subtract. And then we're gonna set that layer to multiply. And now you can see that that nice little shadow on the top is transferred over onto our image of our dog. We can add a few extra little effects onto the image of the dog itself, such as brightness and contrast. You know, we can even throw in a tint effect and just pretty much just look at your scene and try to match the colors of your scene and the contrast level. And of course, this is very rough, but um, let's just move on. And I'm gonna add some fake reflections, glares, since most picture frames have a glass element and the picture sits behind the glass. So we can just create some uh, random shapes here. Uh, we can create a circular mask over here and create sort of these weird glares and reflections. And then we can add that solid to something like add or screen. 
and um, you know whichever works best for you and then make it nice and subtle by lowering the opacity. So of course we can do a lot more with this but for now we're just going to leave it as it is. Don't want to waste too much time on this uh, sort of sidetrack portion of this tutorial. So we're going to grab all these layers and pre-compose them. We're going to call this uh, picture frame of a very handsome dog. Then once we do that we can uh, scale it down and position it in our scene exactly where we want it. So a good place for that would be right here. Now it's not looking too good um, for a number of reasons, but one of it is also the perspective is a little bit off. So I'm going to add an effect called corner pin and uh, we can just uh, sort of push these knobs over here and fix that that way. Then we can add some fast blur and uh, you know, just take a look at your wall, take a look at the sharp edges on the wall and see how blurry they are and try to blur out your picture frame since no footage ever is perfectly sharp. All right, so now that we have that completed, we can uh, play around with the opacity. I mean, it's not really a recommended thing to do, but it's just a cheap way around and, and having it blend in with your environment. Then we can duplicate that pre-comp of our picture frame, add an effect called fill, make it black. Then we can uh, use our arrow keys to slightly nudge this down and to the right so that we create this, uh, this fake shadow. And then we can use that fast blur effect, drop it below the fill and uh, blur it out quite a bit. And that creates a nice little, that creates a nice little shadow. So now we're going to create a new null object and then we're going to use this as a way to animate the picture frame. So we're going to parent both the picture frame and the shadow of the picture frame to that null object and then we can hit P on our keyboard, R on our keyboard and you know even S on our keyboard and start animating. So we can just you know give it a little few shakes and then it sort of falls onto the ground as the earthquake gets a little bit more violent. Now another thing that we can do um, just to sell this idea of this item falling even more is by making it a 3D layer. So making the null and the pre-comps of our picture frames a 3D layer and then we can animate the X rotation of, of this picture frame so that as it falls down it's sort of like leaning towards the camera. So there we go, not the most convincing thing in the world but obviously with a few tweaks you can get it just right. So now let's add a few uh, stock elements just to add some debris and um, a few more things going on in our scene. So I'm using Action Essentials 2. Uh, now this stuff isn't really required. You can just even film a couple of things against a black backdrop and just uh, do it yourself. But in the Action Essentials pack, we have some very convenient uh, debris falling and dust falling. So I'm going to be using that. And uh, it's just a matter of literally just dragging and dropping them, masking the edges out so that we don't see any sharp edges where the video ends. And then really just slap them on to the video wherever you want. And uh, you don't need to do any tracking or any of that since again, this is a static shot and that's a wonderful thing. Now for this particular element where these planks and larger chunks are falling close to the camera, what I'm gonna do is actually add a camera lens blur and then a tint effect just to add to the sense that it's really close to the camera. Then we can add an atmosphere clip and this is just to show some dust flying around as things have moved and collapsed in our scene after the earthquake. So line it up and then you can animate the opacity to sort of fade it in as the earthquake is happening. And then finally the last part of this effect is adding some cracks that are sort of growing onto these walls as the earthquake is happening. So I'm using this image and we can sort of solo just the footage and this image so we have a better idea of what we're doing. So what I'm going to do to just isolate the cracks is add an effect called color key and then with the pick whip tool in this effect I'm going to select that gray color and uh, just bring up the color tolerance until we only see the cracks and then we can set the transfer mode to overlay and it makes it blend with the wall in our scene a lot better. So we're going to create a new solid and um, we're going to make it comp size and we're going to call this map and what we're going to do let's uh, let's turn this off for now we're going to get our pen tool and we're going to pretty much just cut out this uh, shelf and pretty much anything that's supposed to be in front of the wall and uh, in front of the cracks. And then of course you want to animate that mask uh, if, if any of your elements are moving around and changing. So once we do that we want that solid to be the alpha inverted mat of our uh, image texture of those, those cracks. So once I do that you can see that our cracks are now behind the shelf. And then you can create a mask and animate it uh, so that it expands out as the earthquake is happening. So once you have this asset, you can just simply duplicate it, move it around in your scene, you know, maybe make some few uh, adjustments. And now you have some uh, pretty convincing cracks 
that are growing onto the wall. All right, so finally, it's time to add some camera shake to this scene. So what we're gonna do is grab all these elements, pre-compose them, and now what we can do is create a new null object. And uh, you know, of course, in light of what happened recently, we have to call it shake, shake, shake it off Kanye. A few of you guys might get that, and shame if you do. You should not follow and watch and pay attention to celebrity gossip. Anyways, we're gonna add some slider controls to that null object, and you wanna lock that uh, effects controls panel of that null object because we're gonna need to pretty much parent some things to those controls. So let's go onto our Shake It pre-comp and we're gonna all click onto our anchor point stopwatch. We're gonna type in an expression called wiggle, parentheses, zero comma zero, we can just put that for now uh, and close the parentheses. Now we're gonna replace these zeros with the slider controls. So we're gonna pick whip the first slider control with the first zero and the second zero with the second slider control. So all this is doing is instead of typing in a value on changing those zeros, we're just pretty much telling it to look at those slider controls. And we're doing this so that we can actually animate the amount and amount over time of our wiggle expression so that we can control when the earthquake is happening and how long and how intense it needs to happen. So let's start doing that and uh, let's add a few keyframes at just a little bit before the reaction of everything to the earthquake. And then we wanna bump it up where everything is shaking and then you, know, you just wanna sort of bring it all back down to zero once uh, things stop shaking around. Now, since our pre-comp is moving around, we're seeing sort of the empty edges of our composition. Now, you can fix this by scaling it up, but I don't wanna mess around with my framing, so what I'm gonna do is add an effect called Motion Tile, and I'm just gonna increase the output width, output height, and mirror the edges, and that sort of fixes it. It's not perfect, but you know, since everything is shaking, you're not gonna notice it at all. Then, of course, we can add some motion blur, and that is pretty much it. All right, so I sort of skipped forward. I just played around with these keyframes, easy ease them in and out just a little bit. Uh, but this is sort of irrelevant because that will all change depending on how long you want your earthquake to happen. Definitely takes a long time until you get the right amount of earthquake goodness in your scene. Quick side note, if you want to change the amount of motion blur in your composition, you can go under composition settings and under the advanced tab, you can change the shutter angle of your composition to fit your needs. So zero is going to be perfectly sharp and 360 is going to be a ton of motion blur. So I decided to go with something that's a little bit in between. So I put 144. Now usually you wanna have it set to 180 since uh, that is the preferred shutter angle in most shooting scenarios, which equals to about a shutter speed of 50. And if shutter speeds and shutter angles confuse you, then definitely check out a video that I made not too long ago and that will shed some light onto that. So anyways, the final thing that you're seeing me do here is just add a simple curves effect and adding just a little bit of color grading to this shot and that's it, now you have this. All right guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave a like on this video. And if this is your first time on my channel, go ahead and subscribe because there are new videos every week. New tutorials, short films are coming up. A lot of exciting stuff and I'm really happy to have you. All right guys, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions. I'll see you next time.